first, just want to let everybody know that there will not be an episode next week due to Halloween. We have kids, we have nephews, so there will not be an episode next week. Uh, it's Halloween, or it's Halloween week, so there's a lot going on, uh, and we just want to chill with our families. So, yo, sneak this podcast. No, George. Greg. Back in the building. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, well, it's just me again. Uh, George had another meeting, so he was super duper busy. And he'll be back next week. And before anybody starts saying, yo, why didn't you hit me up or why you didn't call me? I'm at the studio early. So there's no way anybody was getting off work, getting here when I get here. So I'm here early, knocking this out the park, getting it good so I can get home, get my kids back, put them in the bed, do the whole nine. All right, you feel me? Uh, episode 130. I think we might be done doing jersey numbers. I'm not sure yet, but I kind of feel like we've been through them all. But, you know, for the... Those who do love it, you know, we got Steph Curry, you know, number 30. We got, um, shoot, Ty Gurley. Um, we have, that's all I could think of. I'm sure, I mean, there's obviously plenty more than the listeners will let us know, but uh, pickups this week, I have absolutely zero pickups. A uh, few come ups that I got rid of, uh, Purple Toe, um, a purple toe, a size eight purple toe, Jordan one, and a size eight bread toe that were just sitting there at the store. I mean, I think somebody had returned them. So I think that's why they were there. But I had no idea size eights went that much. I know George has said it numerous times on this show. And George, you know, if it's something that he doesn't actively want, he will buy a size eight. Look, man, if they're I'm telling you now, a size eight is gold on StockX and GOAT. I don't even know what it is. I don't know when eight became the rare one. I remember when the, the harder ones, the 11 and a half, the 12s, the 13s, 14-ish, um, those became the hard ones to come across and the ones to make the most money off of if you were going to resell them. Not anymore. Um, size eight, a size eight is the way to go. Um, sorry about that. Had to fix something real quick. Um, oh, what else? Uh, so yeah, got rid of those on StockX. Gold. So grab yourself some size eights if you're trying to get rid of them. Um, releases this week. Go through these real quick. Uh, platinum 10 11s. No. All right. The more and more I see them, the worse they get. And I'll tell you this, I seen, I watched the Lakers game last night, I think it was the Lakers game. I don't know who was wearing them, and it might have been Spurs, I mean not the Spurs game, uh, Raptors game, I don't remember. They didn't look too bad on court, but Platinum Tint 11s, Cream 11s, whatever you want to call them joints, they come out this week. Uh, Yeezy 700 uh, Mauve, Mauve, whatever that color is supposed to be, the blackish, grayish, purplish color of the 700s, those dropped this week fire uh i don't wear yeezys anymore so that's not my alley but these have potential to be better than the original wave runner i don't know uh i'm not copping but uh whoever else wants to cop do your thing um kobe ones came out this morning i think kobe ones are i feel like the kobe one might be the worst introduction one of the worst introductory sneakers to a signature sneaker line and that's just me personally um hello man it feels like the mic wasn't correct uh that's just me personally i you know you can obviously go your jordan one you can go your griffies your dion's you can go larry johnson you could go jason kidd i think everybody else's introductory Signature sneaker is better than the Nike Kobe one. I even think the Adidas Kobe one is better than the Nike Kobe one. The, Co the Nike Kobe one is a weird build. And I don't know if it's great hooping shoe or not. It 
it teeters on the line. I mean, it's it, ultimately it is a, a boot. I mean, and when we talk about boots, you know what we mean by boots. It's kind of high. It's kind of clunky. Um, the sole is extremely flat. Uh, the introduction of the camel colorways and stuff are, are pretty dope. The Suns camo Kobe 1 and the undefeated camo, camo Kobe 1, obviously by far the best ones. And I think probably the hardest to come by or at least the highest priced on uh, StockX, GOAT, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, Kobe 1s, those dropped. Uh, I think they sat. Nobody really cares about Kobe 1s. I think we're over that. Everybody is waiting for a 5, 4, maybe even a 6. I think Kobe 6s are overrated. Um, they all had fire colorways, but the shoe itself, when you wore it, it, it just didn't wear right. And I never wore it with shorts, so maybe it looked better with shorts, but it was actually a lot bigger than you expected it to be. It was definitely bigger than the five and the four. Um, the six was way too flimsy and thin, but one of my favorite colorways, actually a few, helicopter and uh, the rice in the uh, Kobe six. So I think people are just waiting for those to drop. Uh, even more eights. And I think when eights finally start releasing again, which is probably down the road, um, I expect um, tons and tons of colorways. I expect a lot of fire colorways uh, to come out from that area. Um, what else? Uh, 79 OG Tailwinds. Uh, fire. Basic regular old school running shoe you know like that yellowish look old school vibe from 79 um overpriced they're a hundred dollars you're not paying that like the only way that even i don't even know if it will fly if it was from that aspect if it was like a j crew collaboration i think a lot of the old nike runner og runners waffles cortez's whatever when they're j crew collaborations people tend to buy them um buy them more than if they just came out on a nike at least to me people do for some reason have some sense of nostalgia when it comes to like buying certain things off sneakers app the chuck taylor's that i guess i don't know if they're just chuck taylor's or they meant something special for the sneakers app whether it was like championship or something um i think i think it um the fact that they sold out is, is ridiculous. I mean, they're a low top Chuck Taylor, maybe a high top Chuck Taylor. It might have been a weapon on there. I can't remember. And I don't want to go on my phone right now while I'm uh, speaking to you guys. Uh, shout out to everybody who listens and shout out to everybody who supports the podcast like usual. Um, appreciate new listeners. Uh, hopefully got some really dope interviews at the end of the year. Working on a few other things. Um, hopefully in the works. Well, there's a lot of emails sent out, so hopefully uh, we can have something 2019 to look forward to, possibly. Um, and that's if I just don't end the podcast. You never know how my moods are. I, I have wild thoughts and anxiety. So um, the Dragon Ball Z Cell um, Prothear, I think that's the model. And then the Dragon Ball Z... Um, I don't know what it's called, the purple one, not deflect. I don't know what it is. Both are the absolute worst two of the entire Dragon Ball Z pack. Uh, I did think the um, young one, I thought that might have been bad, but I saw one in person. It looked really good. The colors and it looked like really good leather and the uh, the orange one, Goku, what, I think that's his name. I thought it was all right. I think it's, it's actually pretty dope. I thought originally when we saw the picture, I thought it was whack, but I like how it has looks like a rough denim canvasy uh, kind of distress type look. So them joints are are clean. And then I think there's like a Air Max Deluxe dropping out. Oh, LeBron James multicolor uh, comes out. It's like gray and multicolor. I don't know if anybody cares. I kind of think that uh, with the Lakers losing and stuff, LeBron 16s are kind of looking a little funny out here, and that's just my opinion. Um, but we'll talk about a little bit that a little bit about that later. Um, trying to think what else comes out. There's nothing that definitely moving the meter for me. Uh, if anybody is out there trying to cop anything, you know, hope you cop. I guess that's what people say. Hope you cop. You know, I like to see the homies win, even if I lose. Yeah, I. Right. 
that might be one of the biggest sneakerheads lies of all time is somebody saying yo i i, I like when the, the homies win and if i lose you know i want us all to win but you know even when the homies win it makes me happy stop it it makes you upset or i've been in that situation when you come you come mobbing through with some yeezy bags the homies didn't they didn't get yeezys and they got funny looks on their face you know they they giving you that congrats you know they giving you that that dap you know they give you that handshake they give you that yo yo congrats fam they giving you that but deep down woohoo soul is feeling funny uh couple of things having to do oh since this is the month of Halloween and we're not doing an episode next week, I will be doing top 10 scary yist movies to me. Okay. To me. All right. I know a lot of people don't understand that to me. That means they're scary or tense or something to me. All right. Just to let you know, top 10 scariest movies of all time to me. Um... And then we will be doing, obviously, Signature Sneaker uh, Tournament. Uh, see who, how many votes we have on that and what's moving on to the final round. Actually, the final round, I think. Uh, finally, like, get this over with. I want to apologize for the Sneaker Tournament. IG isn't conducive to, like, posting links and stuff. So when you post your links in your... Actually, I might be doing it wrong. You know what? I'm not going to take that back. I'm going to, I think I might have figured something out IG wise. Um, but, you know, it, it seems like you're not, I want to be able to post more links than I can. And I think I can. I just haven't tried something yet. So, uh, you know, it's one of those conundrums where you want everybody to go to the uh, website to vote for their signature sneaker, their favorite one. But um, you got to remove the link to your actual platform that you're trying to promote. So I had a hard time doing that. And I've done it. You know, we have definitely a strong following. And I mean, our following on iTunes and Spotify and uh, everything is phenomenal. So uh, that's always good. And shout out to the lady sneakerheads. There's a lot of lady sneakers that, sneakerheads out there that hit me up. You know, that they uh, follow the show, like the show. They think a lot of the stuff we talk about is funny. Uh, appreciate everybody who subscribes on YouTube. You know, I don't know if anybody's aware. But I let everybody know. You know, the YouTube video thing, it wasn't something that we originally wanted to do. You know, a podcast is something that is uh, to be enjoyed in your car or at your leisure, you know, while you're on the move. Uh, there are a few podcasts out there that do do videos. Um uh, talking about other podcasts, not sneaker podcasts. Um, and, you know, we gave it a shot. A lot of people enjoy hearing either our pleasure or displeasure when it comes to sneaker sneakers and uh, a lot of people wanted to see our actual facial expression our actual emotions um a lot of people want to see what we actually look like um i do video strictly in order to post on social media the youtube um it does very well you know we get a, we get a decent amount of views comments and it gives everybody the opportunity to uh see the graphics and see what we talk about so uh, when i primarily uh, the mindset in doing the video is strictly for being able to post clips on IG and attract new listeners, attract new subscribers, and uh, just let people know that we're out there, you know, that the word is out there, and I'm sorry, the podcast is out there, and to indulge, you know, like I said, it's a free show for an hour and a half, two hours to get you through your day, whether you're taking a bus, driving in the whip, stuck in traffic, you're just sitting in that cubicle at work. You know, I appreciate everybody who gives us just that amount of time out of their day and uh, something that means an awful lot to me. Um, I hope the audio sounds right on this because I feel like I'm uh, my voice is tripling. I don't know. It just sounds kind of echoey. A uh, couple things sneaker wise uh, happening right now. You know, it's, a lot of people don't understand that it's really hard to do a uh, a sneaker show. Um, every single week, um, we do the show every single week and, uh, you know, coming up with topics, it's not easy, you know, uh, sneaker community stuff just isn't that, you know, thrilling a lot. You know, when we do the podcast on like a Wednesday and stuff, sometimes something break or a surprise drop or, you know, something like that. So, um, it's not an easy thing to do, but you know, this week there was quite a few things that did happen this week. So, 
uh, obviously, you know, everybody's seen the uh, Kuzma uh, with the Lakers signing with GOAT. Uh, if you're not familiar with GOAT, GOAT is uh, basically a reseller site. I guess it, if that's what they consider themselves, um, GOAT and StockX reseller sites. Uh, and this was, from what I know, the first time a reselling site has signed a professional athlete. Look, I saw a lot of people like, you know, really like not not going crazy, but a lot of people, uh, yo, you know, this is crazy. Yo, he's going to have fire. Yo, yada, yada, yada. It's not really what it's cracked up to be. The GOAT Kuzma relationship is more like it's like uh, what's homeboy that business is booming, whatever that little that little chunky kid whatever his name is I, I can't think of his name um business is booming man i'll call him that whatever it's just the middleman like it's just a middleman that try to like you i got you you know type thing uh, i read something where kuzma was talking about that a lot of people think that being an athlete you get all this rare stuff and you get this stuff um i'll tell you this it seems like when you're on jordan brand you get kind of a lot now, your career goes a little weird because of the Jordan brand curse, but they tend to send them care packages quite often. Um, I don't know how the process would work with a goat supplying Kuzma with sneakers, and I don't even know what size he wears. I would imagine somebody like him wearing a, anywhere from 13 to 15, it ain't going to be easy finding this stuff. What's crazy is, is that, which I think George and I had talked about it in a text message, is that he's a Nike athlete. So he's not even really allowed to um, fully indulge in whatever possibilities that goat can supply him or find him or or whatever. He has to only wear Nike sneakers. So it's basically being a Nike athlete, just a Nike athlete, and you have a plug. Uh, goat is just Kuzma's plug. That's pretty much it. You know, he's not going to... Um, as of right now on the court, I haven't seen him wearing anything fire. And that's another thing too, which, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to touch on. Um, but him being a Nike athlete, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and it's kind of unnecessary and it really doesn't do anything for goat, uh, goat having Kuzma on their roster doesn't make anybody go like, yo, I'm going to shop with goat. It doesn't. Um, something like that, you need a big name. Uh, if you think that it will attract more to that, Kuzma being a second-year player one uh, on a team that was awful last year and is on track to being awful this year, he's not a big enough draw to make anyone go to GOAT and say whatever. GOAT has an excellent following. GOAT is something that needs to be out there media wise now let's talk about stock kicks okay watching monday night football last night boom on the tv stock X television commercial yes they did do like a it wasn't even a stock X commercial during the super bowl but it was a uh, quicken loans commercial and quicken loans and stock x is like by the same investors or the same owner i think dan gilbert is a part of both of them um and a person in the Quicken Loans commercial was wearing a StockX baseball hat. Not even close to the same. Even though that commercial did premiere during the Super Bowl, still not the same. And the commercial had Big Sean in it, which the commercial was whack. I, I don't understand it. Um, but this StockX commercial, I'm going to tell you right now, this StockX commercial is already in the top 10 sneaker commercials of all time it might be in the top five already and i know you're gonna say yo all the jordan commercials all the the barkley and stuff like that oh yeah yeah, yeah. 150 percent agree i mean i'm jumping out the window by saying this and i'm gonna explain why i do feel this way i don't like to just say random stuff and not have anything to where i could back back it up from my point of view whether you agree with me or not i'm gonna tell you why i feel that way the commercial white background, sneakers, only a single sneaker on the screen 
each time, so they were like alternating, flashing sneakers, black letters, words, that's it. That's it. Here's the thing. Why that commercial is so great. When you think about all the Nike commercials, all the uh, maybe some classic Rain Man, Sean Kemp, Reebok commercials. Uh, I'm sure there's a few other ones out there. Some Grant Hill, some Larry Johnson, uh, Kevin Johnson, Converse. There are a lot of classic sneaker commercials out there. We have no classic ones now that I can think of. This one to me is... And this depends on how many times it airs on television and when it airs on television. When it airs on television is very, very important. With the DVR and with just time and kids and stuff nowadays, it feels like we have zero time for anything right now, especially watching live TV. There is one thing that will always remain the best watching it live, and that's sports. So that being said... A StockX commercial playing during Monday Night Football is being seen by millions. Okay, now I'm going to come back to that. Um, I'm going back to describing the commercial first. I'm going to go back to why that commercial showing at that point in time is very, very important. The StockX commercial within itself blows Kuzma signing with Go out the water. It's not even a question. It blows it out of the water. I hope the commercial is played over and over and over multiple, multiple times so people can see it. The reason why it's great is because the commercial was about sneakers. We all know StockX sells Louis Vuitton and Supreme and all this other stuff. They, they should save that for a separate commercial. That's a separate commercial for a different clientele that might not know that that's there. They sell Rolexes. They sell watches. StockX sells a lot of other luxury high-end stuff that necessarily isn't for the same clientele as the sneaker community. Sneakerheads are buying Supreme. A lot of sneakerheads will love to buy Supreme Louis stuff, Rolex, whatever it is that StockX holds on the website. I haven't explored that side too much, handbags, purses, so forth. I'm sure that there are a lot of women, a lot of affluential men, a lot of uh, high fashion people that might not even fully be aware of what StockX has to offer on their site. Back to the commercial. The commercial was showing, I think it had a picture of like, I think a 700, some LeBrons, Jordans, NMDs, Ultra Boost. It was a bunch of hot current sneakers flashing on the screen. And it said every girl, every grail, sorry. Um, it said every grail um, guaranteed authentic, I believe. Um, it said the hottest sneakers, all white background, black letters. It showed off white. It talked about impossible to get. It said on there, impossible to get until now. Every single pair, every grill, I'm reading it right now off the IG, always available. Always authentic. Never sold out. Millions know. Now you do too. Now you do too. They're not talking to me. They're not talking to you guys. My, my, my listeners, the casual sneakerhead. I'm sorry, they're not talking to the sneakerhead. They're talking to the, the fan of sports. They're talking to the casual sneaker person. They're talking to the person who knows of Jordans, knows Kanye has sneakers, but they don't know much about it. They're talking to the person that they don't have time to have a sneakers app on their phone and they don't got time to know when to drop and they don't got notifications on and they don't got Twitter and they're not getting raffle tickets. They're talking to the, the, the grown man sitting on the couch wearing the LeBron jersey. He's in his 45, he's 45 years old and he would love to have a pair of LeBrons that are special. He would like to get a pair of LeBrons where he doesn't got to get up and go to the mall. That commercial shows a website for the casual fan who is wearing a Monday night football jersey, sitting on the couch, eating a blooming onion or something. I don't know what people eat in their houses and they watch sports. A <laughs> blooming onion. That's crazy. I go to your house eating blooming onion. I'm taking a few strips and then I'm leaving. Actually, I'm staying because blooming onions are off the hook. Shout out to Outback Steakhouse. Outback Steakhouse, steaks have got a little weird, but your blooming onion, fire forever. Um, 
they're talking to that sneakerhead. They're talking to the sneakerhead that's like, yo, I really love LeBron. I'm going to get myself a LeBron, a pair of LeBron sneakers. They're talking to the mom and dad who are watching this commercial and like, oh, we'll get them a pair of sneakers off StockX. Has an app, website. The commercial within itself is so perfect. And I encourage people to watch it. Go to our IG page and watch it. It might be on their IG page. I had to record it while it was showing live on Monday Night Football. The commercial is basic and straight to the point. It didn't have a human being in it. It didn't have someone's face. It didn't have anybody talking. It required your attention. You saw sneakers you had never seen before if you're not a sneakerhead. You had saw colors on sneakers you had never thought about because you're just used to the regular black and white. You're not out there paying attention to stuff like that like we are. Might be going out on a limb. Might be just a little overexcited about the commercial. Wouldn't surprise me if commercials like that airing regularly, and if people think there's not going to be one during the Super Bowl, you're, you're bugging. And there better be one. It should be one during the World Series, NBA Finals. A player, a, a, a StockX sneaker commercial, commercial should play during every single sporting event. You're not going to see one during Grey's Anatomy or whatever them shows that people watch. Uh, the Goldbergs, you're not going to see a StockX commercial during that. Wouldn't be bad if it did, but that's not who they're going for at this moment. And I'm nobody. I have no idea who they're going for, but I feel like they're going for the man who's like, man, I'm going to see what the LeBrons go for. There are people out there who are willing to pay $350 for a pair of sneakers because that's the only pair of sneakers they're buying for the year. So for them, that's perfectly fine. Us sneakerheads going on something and saying $350, hmm, that's because we have plans we're trying to get. We'd rather get two or three pairs for 350 versus just a solid one uh, for 350 Casual man with pot belly and blooming onion. Oh, oh, yo, them LeBrons is nice. You know, LeBron to the Lakers this year. I'm excited. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a LeBron fan. I'll buy these. I have them shipped directly to my house and guaranteed authentic and not everybody will have them, even though I don't go anywhere because I eat blooming onions all day. Neither here nor there. The commercial itself has the potential to drive up prices for the reseller. A lot of people are out here complaining that StockX is ruining the market. StockX is killing the resale game. StockX is killing the value for your sneakers. Well, you know what? If you have more of the casual person going in there, using it as a one-stop shop to buy sneakers, all those prices will start going up. You'll start seeing stuff that were retail, close to retail, up an extra 50. I honestly think that could happen depending on the frequency we see these type of commercials and when these commercials are presented to the general public 100 percent, i know for a fact my wife watched the commercial she would say oh do you go on that even though she does but she she, she knows i do but you know it's wife um people spend money on nba apparel um every single year they spend money on football apparel baseball apparel that stuff isn't cheap all right an authentic jersey, if you want the authentic jersey of the player, that, of the jersey that they're wearing on the court, that exact one thickness stitching, the exact one that they could walk up, take off your back and wear and hoop in, you're paying anywhere from $299 to $399. These are facts. NFL jerseys, same thing. Baseball jerseys, same thing. There are cheaper versions of it that are still anywhere from $90 to $150. I have a feeling that StockX prices will start and the value of sneakers will start slightly creeping up um, depending on how forceful they are with this marketing strategy of using television. Uh, don't be surprised. You start, you know, not even going to say nothing. That, I'll just leave that at that. Um, it's just a major move. And it kind of shows you how goofy – goofy Foot Locker commercials are. We all know those commercials. Hilarious. Love them. Super funny. The problem is, is that it's focused on trying to show personality of athletes or actors or musicians or whoever in the commercial versus showing the sneakers that they sell. Now, does Foot Locker need to have a sneaker commercial? No, they really don't. Um, 
the main reason to go to Foot Lockers and Shoe Palaces and things like that is if you're getting a general release sneaker and it um you don't want to wait for it to come to mail. Now, me personally, if I can get a general release sneaker $20 cheaper, um, even though I know I could go right down the street and grab it now, I had to wait a week for it to come to mail if I could get it for $20 cheaper. Going to Foot Locker and these local places for sneakers and stuff is uh, birthday gifts. You're just in the mall. I don't know how many people walk through the mall and go to Foot Locker and say, yo, I'm going to go ahead and pick these up. I feel like people go... Well, you know, I'm not going to say that they used to do that back in the day. I know for a fact, me now, when I go to the mall to go to that store, I'm looking for something. I'm not going to just see, let me go in here and walk around and see, oh, man, I'll take these now. No, that doesn't happen unless it's like a ridiculous sale. And even then, when you're in a physical brick and mortar store, you walk into a shoe palace, a foot locker, a champs, a foot action. I don't care what they have on sale or what they have on the shelves. In my mind, it's still probably cheaper on eBay or I could find it on offer up Craigslist. My mindset is always, oh, if it's $50 here, it's probably $30 on eBay. A lot of times that's facts. StockX and GOAT. They're going to push out the, I mean, we're already seeing it. They, these stores are closing right right under, right before our eyes. I go into uh, Shoe Palace this weekend. Shout out to my uh, homie Chris. Had to get him a birthday gift. And you go in there and they have like six colorways of one sneaker. And they're all lined up on the wall beautifully. You know, it's almost like, an illusion. You look on there and you realize, geez, I just looked at about seven or eight colorways of 270s. 270s are fire, but it's like your entire stock is almost 270s. And then you got like two Ultra Boosts sitting there in the corner. And then you have, um, you know, a, a fly knit racer or something. And then you have some NMDs and some other stuff, you know, lower end Adidas. You know, there was like every color Calabasas there. I haven't seen a lot of stuff that sold out on sneakers apps just sitting there. I told Chris and uh, I'm sorry, I told uh, George and Simple. I said, man, you'd be surprised at what's just sitting on the shelves. Um, and maybe it's not a surprise. Maybe I just don't go to the mall enough to know what's out there. I go straight to StockX, straight to go straight to eBay. And that's just the way it is. Um, and nothing's going to change in a StockX continues to put out commercials like this and attract the casual sneakerhead and stop worrying about us obsessive sneakerheads the sky is the actual limit uh going back to what i was saying about you know kuzma and goat the nba rule me and george might have touched on it a little bit i don't know how much we actually discussed about it but um To me, I haven't felt, I feel like the NBA rule allowing NBA players to pretty much wear whatever they want on the court, it's about seven years too late. Everybody was losing their mind. You know, people lose their minds on social media at the slightest crack of sneaker news. It doesn't matter what it is. Somebody will say, oh, the Jordan 1 got canceled for July. You'll see that about 7,000 times on post. I saw Goat and Kuzma a million times, and I'm just like, man, we're like people are out here, and it's a lot of trying to be first, and I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. Anything I can post up today, you know, before anybody else did, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it. The NBA rule for athletes to wear pretty much any sneakers that they want on the court is about seven to eight years too late. I haven't seen this season, I think we're five games in maybe four or five games into the nba season i'm watching the game on the court i haven't seen anything that i was remotely curious of what that was or what color is that or what is that at all even going to soul collector and all the other um blog type platforms that provide sneaker information they'll show on court picks they'll show um you know who was wearing what tonight I think I've seen like a Grinch, a 3D Kobe 6, LA Orange, not Orange County, but the LA, East LA Blue, 
You saw like some patterns on some Kyrie's. There is nothing out there interesting enough to care about during this rule. I feel like the NBA must have saw that coming themselves and was like, there's really not much they're doing out here that's different. I give P.J. Tucker the hardest time all the time about his, I'm not saying it's his, but it felt like his primary goal was what he's rocking tonight, not what he's going to provide for his team tonight. Last year had a great season, and I eased up on it. You know, I did. Um, but I'm just an outsider looking, and I'm nobody. I'm just a man with a mic and two cameras uh, and a co-host. Shout out to George. Um, they're just too late. You're not going to come out with anything that P.J. Tucker or Gilbert Arenas hasn't come out, Nick Young hasn't come out with yet, like or already. I mean, we've already seen some of the most upper, high upper echelon of sneakers on the court. Like, we've seen Yeezy 2s, we've seen Yeezy 1s, we've seen 720s, we've seen, um, you know, Travis Scott, we've seen uh, P.E. Sean Marion uh, Jordan 5s, we've seen Oregon LeBrons, we've seen Oregon 5s, Oregon 4s, North Carolina 4s, we've seen, I think, maybe Summer of Legends, I think, P.J. Tucker one time, we've seen every single fire Sneaker on the court, courtesy of P.J. Tucker, you know, uh, Nick Young at moments, and Gilbert Arenas uh, back in the day. We've seen it all. Um, you're not going to come on the court now and wow anybody. You can't wow anybody unless you walk out there wearing an undefeated four. That would be the only thing that I think I haven't seen P.J. Tucker wear. Um, but the NBA rule, it's it's not that exciting. It's just like additional news and attention and got everybody to retweet it and post it and talk about it, um, which I'm doing. Um, but we're not missing out on anything. We're not going to see anything that was necessarily like, yo, we haven't seen that in forever. A lot of the classic old stuff is it's not washed, but it's just not attention grabbing. Now, going back to a Kuzma and Goat, I always forget how young these players are. That's what we always forget. We look at them as grown men out here making a lot of money, um, and we're just yelling and cheering at them, whether we're yelling at them violently in anger or we're cheering for them with the utmost ad ad admiration. But I forget, these are all basketball players who grew up wearing specific LeBrons and Kyries and stuff during their stints and their periods of time in high school, grade school, and college. So a Kuzma... He would probably like, man, I, I want to wear, a, I want a LeBron uh, 11, you know. I remember having a LeBron 11 here. I would like a South Beach 8. I remember I had LeBron 8s here, but I never could get my hands on a South Beach colorway. So being in the position that they're in right now, they would all love that opportunity to be able to wear those classic sneakers. A PJ Tucker, avid sneaker collector for a long time, probably has a lot of that stuff already. Um, somebody like a Kuzma, uh, doesn't, it's not, I would imagine, and I don't know what size he wears. I'm going to just go, I'm going to say 14. I just say a 14, probably not that easy to find a DS or really good pair of South beach eights and a size 14. Um, and then even if you could, if I was Kuzma, I wouldn't even want to rock them. If goat said, yo, here you go. Here are some Kobe, um, Kobe six rice colorway. You, you just don't come across that all the time. And now you're telling me I got a rocket on the court. I would hate it. Now, unless they're supplying with him with additional pairs they find on the side for him to keep to wear casually, that would suck if Goat comes to you and says, yo, yo, here's an M&M 4 and we want you to rock it. Hmm. That's when you have to say, no, I'll rock these Kobe ADs and I will put this M&M 4 in the closet. Shout out to Goat. Shout out to StockX. Shout out to Kuzma. Uh, shout out to the NBA. Like I said, the NBA rule for wearing whatever sneakers you want, it's underwhelming. You're not going to impress sneaker heads who have watched over the years um, incredible and at the same time nonsense hit the court on the feet of P.J. Tucker, Nick Young, 
And uh, going back a little further, give her a read this. Uh, sneakers tournament. Appreciate everybody who has voted uh, for the signature sneaker tournament. Like I said, I apologize for how long it's gone. There's really no easy way to try to set up something like this. Um, because I would love to be able to set the bracket up to where everyone can make their bracket, which I, I'm going to probably figure out, you know, around before March comes back around if the podcast still exists in um, how people can create their bracket all the way through to the championship and submit them or send them to us. And then we could collect those and see how it pans out with votes um, and let people vote all at once. So one week would be making your bracket, make as many as you want, maybe throw in a giveaway or something, and then the rest will be voting. I am working on being able to try to provide something like that to you guys, the listeners, who we appreciate uh, the support, like always. Um, sneaker tournament. So appreciate everybody who voted. Uh, appreciate everybody who asks questions, give their opinions when I post which sneakers are currently uh being voted for and uh right now so we have the jordan 11 uh the four seed versus the jordan eight i'm sorry the eight seed jordan three and the jordan three won jordan three beat jordan 11 i'm shocked like i i honestly thought concords would probably win it i wanted reebok questions to win it uh, but once I started seeing, actually, once the previous round when the Concord Jordan 11, not Concord, Jordan 11 model beat Jordan 1s, I said, oh, yeah, they're they're winning the championship. And they didn't even make it to the final. So Jordan 3 advance and the Jordan 3 uh, will be playing. So we had the 11 seed Jordan 6 versus the 14 seed Jordan 5 and the Jordan 6 beat the Jordan 5. Um I don't want to say easy, but they won. So this final round, Jordan 3, the 8 seed versus the 11 seed, Jordan 6. I'm going to go with the Jordan 6. I understand the appeal of the Jordan 3. I do. I think it's a great looking shoe. It looks awful on me. I never understood the the cracking of the midsole and stuff. That just drove me nuts. I mean, you're talking about where creasing your shoe was your biggest issue. Actually, cracking the midsole is crazy. Uh, I remember I had come across two DS pair of uh, Cement 3s, man, years, years ago, you know, with the Jumpman on the back. Um, for weird trades, got them and tried. I remember I wore a pair and just fooling around, shot a layup, you know, shot a layup, you know, at the gym. Looked at the insole, cracked. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. These are DS. All I did was jump into a layup. Um, so like I said, Jordan 3, 8C versus the 11C, Jordan 6. Uh, didn't see that coming. I'm going Jordan 6. Jordan 6 is my favorite Jordan of all time. It's the Jordan that he won his first championship in. It's probably the most, Im the second most important Jordan next to the Jordan 1. The reason why the Jordan 1 is obviously the most important is because due to it being banned by the NBA and obviously the colors and Nike taking on that responsibility financially to pay the fines in order for Michael Jordan to wear that sneaker on the court. Jordan 6, first championship against the Lakers. Magic Johnson up in the air, switch hands, layup, under the hoop, hugging the trophy, classic hat. Dad cut him. Jordan 6 should be the champion. But you guys vote. So voting will open up tomorrow, maybe. I don't know. Tomorrow or Thursday. I'll see uh, how I'm feeling, uh, how quickly I want to move on that. But shout out to everybody who voted. Uh, what else do I want to talk about today? Oh. Lena Waith. Lena, Lena, Lena Waith. Uh, if you guys remember on our episode, we did the Q&A. Somebody has submitted a question asking us who our ideal or a person that we really want to discuss sneakers with or do an interview or talk to. And I hope a majority of you remember I said Lena Waith. Love her. 
I think she is an incredible, uh, interesting person. She loves sneakers. She produces phenomenal television shows that are, I feel, probably really underrated. She's a creative, a creator. She has an excellent mind. And I just like her as a person and vibe. Now, she is being given the opportunity by, I think it's going to be an app. And it's called Quibi or Quibi. Uh, it's supposed to be Quick Bite, um, formed in the one word. She's given her own show uh, on this platform that uh, is coming out soon. Um, a sneaker culture show. Now, look. There, uh, shout out to Brandon Rogers. Brandon Rogers, one of the things I watched, uh, Talk Sneaks. If you don't know what that is, you should check it out. Uh, Brandon Rogers does an IG Live. Uh, it's called Talk Sneaks. And uh, he has great ideas. I want to get him, I'm going to have him call on the show one day. He's a smart guy. I like his opinion sometimes and I like his point of view. And he seems like a genuine good dude. Um, he always says, not always, but he recently said, and I see other people say this on social media all the time as well. There's plenty of room for all of us. It really isn't. It's it's It really isn't enough room for all of us. There are, when we started the podcast, um, when we started the podcast, there were, I think, two that were, and I want to say one. I think there might have been one or two that were actively doing stuff. There were others out there fizzled out. All those other ones had numerous issues with them that fizzled out. It's a commitment. It is not easy coming here doing this every single week. And I get why there are so many. You go to iTunes, type in Sneaker Podcast, you'll see a plethora of them. You'd be like, dang. And they haven't loaded episodes in years. Um, but I hate to be the one to say this, and I don't want to sound cynical at all. But there really isn't a lot of room for us. So when you have the opportunity to do better, be better than your competition, we can be all friendly. We can be friends. We can be cool. We can shake hands. But my goal for my show is to be better than every single other show every single week. That's literally my only goal and what drives me to do this every week. I appreciate the supporters. I appreciate the listeners. But I have an insatiable need to just be better than everybody else all the time. If there's something that I really put my mind to it. It's like being a sneakerhead. You want the dopest, flyest sneakers. You don't care who didn't get them. You got them. It matters. Um, I would love to think that there's room for everybody. Uh, but this new platform app, Quibi, giving Lena Waith, a successful person already, a platform to discuss sneaker culture, to me, is just, I'm going to say counterproductive. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Um, I feel like there is too many other people out there providing great content in our culture that doesn't get the opportunity. I'm not championing, championing, whatever, for myself right now. I'm doing it for everybody. I don't care if another show, podcast or whatever, got an opportunity that, that, that we didn't get. Because to me, when one gets an opportunity that another isn't getting, it's going to open the eyes to other platforms and say, huh, you know what? They went this route. We're going to go look for a show of our own, a podcast of our own and do something like that. This is why I always have such a gripe with stuff like Complex and uh, other areas. I get that. I, I wish a lot of platforms would say to themselves, when they want to start a show and they want to do something, they would say, you know what? We're going to go get talent. I know these places are chop full of young, eager people, and they probably all think, yo, I can do this. Oh, oh. No, we'll, we'll do it. We'll put together a show, and we'll see what you guys think. Everyone thinks you can do that, and it doesn't always work out that way. 
I know I got beefs with a lot of people when it comes to this podcast. There's a lot of people that don't like me. There's a lot of people that do like us. Um, but if any other person or show got an opportunity that we didn't, that means to me that just a little bit longer and everybody would get that opportunity. I'm not trying to hate on I'm not I'm not hating on Lena Wave. I'm not. She's done great things for herself and put herself in a position to be somebody that has sought after to discuss something like sneakers. She she is. Now, she's already famous and successful and I'm I'm assuming rich and fulfilling all of her dreams. But there are people who would love to fulfill their dream and be given the opportunity by these larger platforms. They just would. If somebody on the Monday Mensal, if somebody on Sneaker Files, Sneaker Box Podcast, um, I don't even know the other ones, um, Unseemed, if they got an opportunity, even though I feel that we're the best show out there, period, If any of them got an opportunity that we haven't gotten yet, or if I got an opportunity they haven't gotten yet, everyone needs to realize that they're close. But when you see stuff like this continuing to happen, we're nowhere near close. We are all just internet shows and on a podcast and YouTube and and stuff like that. It's like people who are doing sneaker reviews. I could think of probably, I could think of almost double digit people that I watch I watch religiously, but I catch them when I can. Sneaker reviews, who do YouTube sneaker reviews, sorry, sorry on YouTube, are phenomenal. Their cameras look good, lighting is great, give in depth, real opinion about a shoe, provide what it looks like on feet. There's a lot of people out there doing it, but there's only a certain few that gets recognized for it. It's annoying. It's annoying and it's tiresome. That's why a lot of people that start stuff fade away. There's a lot of people that just, I'm not doing this anymore. Now, that is a testament to somebody's will to keep going, somebody's uh, hard work, tenacity, life, things get in the way. I get it. But if you're constantly being jumped over by people who already have it, it's annoying. There is one thing that I will always agree with Kanye on, that there are really gatekeepers out there. The problem with Kanye is, is that he doesn't realize he's a gatekeeper. So he's a moron. But anyway, give somebody else an opportunity. Quibi, Complex, uh, Bleacher Report, Slam, High snobiety, modern or give somebody else an opportunity, a tryout, um, an opportunity to write in something to say, hey, I would like this opportunity. An application like I know that there are things that people could supply and different point of views and things that people can provide to other platforms if given the opportunity. Lena Waith has worked her butt off and deserves every single thing that comes to her. But there are people like me, like you, like them, like whoever who deserve the exact same opportunity or try out to say, hey, I know I'm just a regular guy from Arizona or a regular person from California or Detroit, Atlanta, you know, Florida, wherever. I'm just a regular person who have a perspective and I would like to be given the opportunity to try out for you or express my point of view and give me the opportunity to see if this works if it doesn't work boom you know move on go ahead and get you a whoever i don't know joe lapuma at all but i think he's pretty high up and complex (sighs) i think i heard somebody say that he's like vice president of complex or something like that i could be wrong i could be talking out of the side of my neck i don't know but It's really not a reason for a Jola Puma to be doing sneaker shopping. I'm sure that they have somebody young or somebody out that they could give the opportunity to to do so. I feel like a lot of people like to act like they provide a lot of opportunity. Not talking about Jola Puma, not talking about him. People in general, they think that they are, but 
this is a dog eat dog world and people are willing to jump over everybody and anybody to get ahead. Um, even if they're already ahead. This is nothing against Lena Waithe and this is not hating. This is nothing of the sort. This is simply observing a continuing pattern of people trying to provide something to the sneaker culture and not even being given the opportunity to be shot down. You can send a lot of emails and stuff to people um, and not even get a response. A lot of people think it's easier to not respond. You know what feels worse than a no <laughs> is a not response. Sometimes just, you know, not at this moment. Sometimes, you know, even just a conversation about it, it motivates people to go. It does. There are some people that watch their YouTube and I tell them, I say, yo, what's up, man? It's been a while. Your whole life, you know, things like that. Oh, okay, cool. You know, just making sure, you know, I think one of yours is dope. That one thank you or that's dope or I appreciate it or oh, I check it out every week. That one motivates people to I'm gonna come back Tuesday and do the exact same thing uh make it even better I'm gonna go home and think about it and write how to improve my YouTube yo I'm not gonna buy this pair of sneakers I'm gonna buy a better camera yo I'm not gonna buy this this week uh I'm gonna go ahead and get a better light yo you know what I said I was gonna get both off whites I'm gonna just grab the one and buy a better microphone I'm gonna buy another one buy better headphones better computer you know so I could put that fire content out there that I could appreciate and hopefully somebody will say hey I checked your stuff out I like to give you the opportunity to try to join our platform that's all we're asking for congratulations Alina Waith the show is called I don't even know it's called you ain't got these <sighs> rich people saying you ain't got got the anyways who am i i'm just somebody providing content with the money out of my pocket not the only one out here doing so there are plenty of other people out here providing content free um out of the goodness of their heart money out of their pocket i'm not even trying to complain i'm not looking for any kudos i'm not looking for anything i'm looking for somebody to be given an opportunity um for doing something better, if not equivalent, to the current influencers or leader. That's it. Give people an opportunity. Um, hmm. It's kind of all I got right now. Uh, like I said, I will be doing top 10 scariest movies to me. Uh, I know everybody saw the Union collab video. Obviously fake to me, uh, the video. But uh, it was dope. It's a dope video, but it's, it's not real. It's it's a dope video, but it's, it's ridiculous. Definitely want a pair of Union Jordan 1s. Uh, me and George talk about Union all the time. One of the most expensive stores that sells streetwear in California. Facts. The Jordan 1, it reminds me of a top three. Now, I had a bunch of top threes, and I let George and Ryan bully me into selling them instead of keeping one. Uh, I do miss them, even though I never wore them. I'm not even sure if I liked them, but I, do want, I did want one in my collection. So I will be trying to do everything in my power to get a Union 1 uh, granted the opportunity. That'd be awesome. And if anybody out there wants to reach out and provide any help, I'm here to listen. Nine and a half to ten. Um... Trying to think, nothing else. Lakers are trash. Um, Lakers just have to win. <laughs> like, that's it. They have to win. Actually, you know what? I'll talk a little bit about sports. Um, after I do the top 10 scares movies ever to me. Now, disclaimer. Let me take a sip of my drink. Ah, Gatorade. Is it in you? Um... Disclaimers, scary movies. I'm already, shout out to Steph Flossie. I think he's the homie, but he says a lot of mean stuff to us. I think that a scary movie isn't always you screaming or, ah, or ah, ah, ah. It, it's not that. 
scary movies aren't always blood. It isn't always knives and gunshots and unstoppable men. A scary movie is something that makes the hair stand up on your arms. It's something that makes you stop breathing while watching it and you don't even realize it. A scary movie is something that keeps you up at night. A scary movie is when you hear something similar from the movie in your everyday life and it triggers something that you thought of. It's suspense, it's thriller, it's intensity, it's being uncomfortable. I know some of you are going to sit there and say, you thought that was scary? Oh my God, bruh, it made me feel a certain way. Bro, if you don't got uh, uh, evil dead on your list, you're insane. That scared you. That to me was just gore over the top. I'm not scared of gore. I'm not scared of over the top. I'm scared of something that I feel could be a possibility in my real life. That's what scares me. All right. Um, honorable mentions. Top 10 scariest movies to me. Halloween is next week. No episode next week. So don't look for it. Just go back and listen to episode 1 through uh, 129. I'd appreciate it. Honorable mention. A Quiet Place. Came out this year. The reason why that movie is on here is because a movie, one of, to me, the most important element of a scary movie or a thriller or a suspenseful movie is silence. Silence is so key. The entire movie was pretty much silent. I mean, the script might have been, you know, 20 pages. The script was more scenic in direction. Oh, I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. Okay. I'm going to be discussing these movies. If you haven't seen some of these movies, I don't know what to tell you. But spoiler alert. Quiet Place. Uh, it ended up being these large entities. I don't know. They move super fast. They can only react to sound. They're blind from what I could tell. The only issue I had with Quiet Place is it wasn't long enough. I feel like all movies, good movies should be two hours, 22 hour, 30 minutes. I do. That to me gives ample time to build up to something. Your feelings and emotions have to build up. In a movie, a slasher movie, the first scene, someone gets their head cut off. There's a lot of movies that I talked about with a coworker of mine to where they got to the point of funny. I'm not scared of Michael Myers. I'm not scared of Jason movies. I'm not. Freddy Krueger, eh, teetering. But the unstoppable man who, like, gets shot, lays down, gets up gets blown up, walks out, head cut off, gets up, puts it back on. That's not scary. That's stupid. When you find yourself in a movie theater and everyone starts laughing collectively because he just got blown up, but he's still crawling on the ground. Uh, no, those aren't for me. Quiet Place, they didn't explain where these monsters or whatever came from. They didn't say alien invasion, toxic chemicals they didn't say nothing they were always there didn't say a word they were just now everyone has to be quiet and uh, obviously at the end they figured out how to kill them but still where did these things come from number 10 top 10 scariest movies to me i'm gonna see if george can do one next week george doesn't uh i don't think particularly like scary movies but we'll see if he comes up with one top 10 scary movies to me a Nightmare Before Elm Street, the original Freddy Krueger movie. Now, Freddy Krueger with it himself isn't scary now. Back then, he really wasn't scary. His face was scary and stuff. What made Freddy Krueger scary was he came to you when you went to sleep. Everybody on God's green earth goes to sleep. Or Buddha, whoever you worship. If you even... Remember 
as a child watching that movie, laying in your bed, closing your eyes, you didn't want to have a bad dream that night. You were hoping you had a good dream. It was terrifying knowing that the villain comes to you in your dreams. Everyone has to sleep. Number nine, Mother. I think Mother came out this year, but it might have been 2017. It has Jennifer Lawrence in it. The movie is it a what I would like to call a traditional scary movie. The movie is so intense and so nerve wracking. It makes it scary. When a movie goes off and everyone, me, my, my wife, my sister-in-law are watching the movie. When a movie goes off on the screen and you all look at, look at each other and go, jeez, that was a scary movie. That was an intense movie. That was an uncomfortable movie. That was a movie that made you feel suspense. Mother, go see it. There's a part in the movie with a baby. Number eight, The Visit. M. Night Shyamalan, I love the movie Signs. I love Sixth Sense. Um, phenomenal movies to me. M. Night Shyamalan has fallen off dramatically All right, when it comes to making movies. I thought Devil was good. Devil was the one where everyone was trapped in the elevator and the guy was possessed. I think it was Tom Hardy. Um, the Visit involves that they're like, they're like grandparents or something. Creepy house, middle of nowhere. The two kids visit, and uh, grandma is obviously possessed or something. That movie was so intense and suspenseful for how it was shot and how uncomfortable it made you. It was nuts because you're watching kids terrified of their grandparents. I believe they were grandparents in a home. We all had them, that one relative. Or that one relative's home that was just, just gave you the chills. Everybody's had that relative or still does. The visit did that to me. <laughs> Number seven, Final Destination. I don't even know if Final Destination is considered a scary movie. The reason why Final Destination is a scary movie is because it's one of those situations where you don't want to be right. The first scene when... They got on the plane for the school trip. I believe they were going to Paris. When it blew up and burst into flames, and then you realize the guy was having a dream, and he woke up, you got to get off the plane. I am a firm believer in energy and premonition and feeling and thought. I... If if I remotely had any type of dream or reaction to that, of that taking place on an airline and all of the people that are on the airline are in my dream and I wake up from that before we take off, oh, I'm getting off the plane. I'm losing my mind. You're going to drag me off. You can ban me from your airline. That movie was so intense because you knew death was coming. You didn't know when and you didn't know how. Now, it did get a little stupid. I think there was one scene in the bathroom with like the water was like moving by itself. A little dumb. You know, it gives you this feel of like it's the Grim Reaper. Um, but it is a tense, scary movie to me. And I hate flying. Number six. The Ring. I know The Ring right now isn't scary anymore. I know it. Save your comments. Save your, your judgment. You were scared of The Ring. The Ring, when it came out, nobody anticipated it being as tense as it was, suspenseful, and remotely, if you want to use the word scary, scary. No one anticipated that. It. No one had even knew what it was. It was one of those like random scary movies that came out. What made that movie great? Silence. Silence and a, I don't want to say it was a unique look because I'm, there might have been other movies that had it, but the unique look of the girl and the story of what took place about the girl being thrown down the well. And then the video 
when she climbed out that TV, I'm not gonna lie to you, shook ones part three, sneak disc aversion. The Ring is a great movie. It's put together really well. Great actor or actress, great actors. Um, the scenery, the background makes a scary movie. You're not gonna scare me in New York City. It's too crowded, too noisy. I'm not scared in that type of scene. And a, me, a, movie, a, a movie that scares me in like New York City is like I'm being, you're constantly all night being chased by like a local gang. That's scary. That's stressful. All right. But uh, 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 scary. I think Jason went to New York one time. Stupid. All right. I think the Predator was in L.A. one time in Predator 2 with Danny Glover. Man, Predator and Jason, kill yourself. All right. But. I think the ring was in Washington, maybe. I think it was Washington. Cloudy. The sun was never out in that movie. You didn't need the sun. It was like Seattle. There was a ferry scene, a cabin. Had to go across a large body of water. You got a black and white girl. Uh, she wasn't mixed. It was black and white. Anyways, chasing you. It was scary. And, you, and she had a weird son. The weird son was being affected. The son was weird. Let me tell you something. Scary kids. When my kids got to bed at night, terrifies me i do not like little kids walking through the house at night it's scary i just don't number five the hills have eyes look the hills have eyes is an intense movie i'm not gonna get too in deep too in depth into it because the scene that bothered me the most, I'm just going to say the RV scene, the Hills Have Eyes one, I think there's multiple versions, was the RV scene when the guy was in there with the girl. Like, I don't know if they're just oddities or I think they were like messed up from a nuclear blast, like these people. I don't know what they are. I can't remember. That RV scene was way too intense for me. I don't care what type of movie enthusiast you are as a human being. That will always be disturbing anything with women, children. The girl, or she might have been a woman age, I don't know. And the RV with the monster, freak, whatever they are, that did it for me. It just, it shook me to the core. Like, I was actually shocked that that was in the movie. I couldn't believe that that was, like, not taking out. It was just too much for me. The movie, it was creepy within itself. Um... It's one of those situations where you don't want to be lost wherever they were, the desert. You don't know what's out there. I didn't like it, but it was it was scary. That It was a crazy movie. But that RV scene, nah. I'll never watch the movie again just because of that scene. I can't watch that again. Like, I don't think I ever fully watched it when I watched it. I just couldn't to me. Number four. This might surprise a lot of people. A lot of people might not have ever seen this movie. A lot of people might not have ever heard of this movie. A lot of people might have seen this movie and think this movie sucks. The Mist. The Mist is a movie where it looks like a small town, I believe. Small town. And a mysterious mist cloud engulfs the entire city. Not the fog. The mist. Crazy stuff starts happening. What ends up being the reason was like some type of military thing that opened up this dimension. These creatures, monsters, whatever, came through this tear and time, whatever. It sounds crazy talking to you about it. You're thinking like, that sounds stupid. That movie was intense. One of the main reasons was why it was intense to me was... I am not a fan of natural disasters. We live in Arizona. We don't get floods. We don't get hurricanes. We don't get tornadoes. We don't get stuff like that. We do get like flash floods from the rain and stuff like that. But we don't get tsunamis. We don't got uh, mudslides. We don't have stuff like that in Arizona. We just have hot sun. That's it. When the wind starts blowing mad wild and the water starts rising up in the street from the rain, shook. I am shook. I have no idea why, but all I want to do is just hop in the car, take the kids, hop in the car and go to the mall or the grocery store. I have no idea why I feel such comfort in the mall and the grocery store as if like those couldn't aren't affected as well. I just feel like I don't know why I just do the movie where they, they were in the grocery store trapped because they didn't know what was outside. The bickering, the debating of being trapped inside of a place that I consider a safe place. 
and you're arguing with complete strangers, people that you do know, and you have these different philosophies, you start to get to know each other and what they think, then you get to the battle of, you know, forget this, we're going outside, and then you begin to see death here and there, and you don't know what's happening, you don't know if you're coming for, someone's coming to rescue you, you don't know, intense to me, love that movie, The Mist. Number three, Saw. Saw has had, what, nine, ten versions? I don't know. I think I stopped at six, seven maybe. It was tradition for me, my wife, and my oldest son to go watch Saw movies uh, every Halloween. Uh, Saw one in particular. Saw two, three, you know, fine. The guy waking up chained by his ankle, foot, leg, I don't remember what it was arm whatever it was and then you are basically put in the predicament of where you have to now remove your own limb that is crazy intense because those are situations that you could put yourself in likely to happen no but you have to really think to yourself am i willing to do something like that i don't think i could cut my own hand off or arm or leg in order to get free I just don't think I have that in me. I I actually, I know I don't have that in me. I think I'd rather just take my odds of fighting or dealing with whatever comes next. Chopping off your own limb. First of all, it's not easy. I mean, I think the guy had like a hacksaw in the movie. I mean, you ain't come through that no time soon with like a hacksaw or whatever kind of saw it was. You're gonna need a chainsaw or something similar. Intense, way too intense. Number two. I know some of you are going to be like, huh? Paranormal activity. Preferably paranormal activity too. That kitchen scene, didn't see that coming. I encourage you. Go to YouTube.com. Type in paranormal activity two, kitchen. I watched it today. Even though I knew it was going to happen, still like edge of my seat. Tense. The reason why those movies are scary, the first time we watched the first one, we had just bought our home. There, When you buy a house or you're in a new dwelling or a new place, sounds might as well be the devil walking in and the Grim Reaper holding hands. You hear the wall crack, creak. You hear something you think is a footstep. You hear something. It will keep you up at night. Paranormal activity was the first time we watched it with my brother-in-law and his old girlfriend. Oh, my goodness. I could not sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. Every sound in the wall, every sound in the backyard, every footstep I heard in the neighbor's yard, I just couldn't. I was so uncomfortable. You're home by yourself, and you hear just that, like, crack in the wall that's like, it sounded like somebody was shooting dice. You're like, yo, what you doing? I don't know why we do that. What? what, Hey, what you doing? Maybe I just do that. I hear a loud sound in the house. Uh, stop it. Sometimes I walk into the house. It's pitch black. And I just yell out, I got a gun. I have no idea if that's going to do anything or not. They might not run or not. But I just walk in and say, just to let y'all know, I got two handguns and I, I will start dumping. Number one. I still feel like this should be on everyone's number one list if you've seen the movie. If you watch the movie now... I don't know if you would feel the same way. The Exorcist. The Exorcist to me is hands down and will always be the scariest movie of all time. I don't think anybody can put together anything scarier than The Exorcist at that time. Now, I grew up in the church with my family. I have seen some wild stuff in church, you know, when it comes to... I have seen some wild stuff before. That's how I'll put it. The movie was incredibly shot. The casting was phenomenal. It's an older movie. So if you haven't seen The Exorcist, go see it. I don't care how old you are. Um, If you're fine with that and if you're younger than a certain age and your parents are fine with it, go watch The Exorcist. It will make you shiver. Now, the special effects and stuff in it, yeah, they're dated now. They look a little kind of wonky now but it's the script it's the script it's the sound which is almost absent it's the movement 
It's the creaking of the stairs. It's the sound of the mom's shoe on the wood floor. It's the knowing the mom is with her child who she created and loves her to death, but she is deathly terrified of her. Imagine being in your own home terrified of your child. I'm not talking about an adult child. I'm talking about a child. I, I It would, yeah, the movie is great. One of the things that makes it great is the age of the girl and the language being used. I'm not a cursor. You'll never hear me curse unless I'm like super faded and I might throw out something here and there. The combination of words with religious uh, connotation, it's crazy. I know society has greatly changed, you know, and how they view religion and things like that and respect for certain entities in society. And um, But if you are just a human being, it should make you uncomfortable to hear some of the stuff said coming from that little girl in that movie. And when she had that crucifix, <laughs> yo, chills, chills. I got the chills now thinking about that because it's like chills. That's my top 10 scariest movies of all time to me. Recap number 10. Nightmare on L Street. Number nine, Mother. Number eight, The Visit. Number seven, Final Destination. Number six, The Ring. Number five, The Hills Have Eyes. Number four, The Mist. Number three, Saw. Number two, Paranormal Activity, preferably PA2. And number one, Exorcist. The original Exorcist. Not this Emily Rose. Not this Conjuring. Not this Insidious. All this other nonsense. The Exorcist. Scary movies, scariest movie of all time to me. Appreciate everybody. Send me your scariest movies. I want to see what they are. Appreciate everybody that sent me their top 10 uh, best sneakers to them. I want to see, I want to know what you think is the scariest movie ever. And I want to see something that I haven't seen before because October has a couple weeks left. I love watching scary movies during this period of time. So I want something uh, to watch. Um, I really don't have anything else. Like I said earlier, Lakers are trash. Uh, but I think we we're starting to see that. Uh, my uncle had said it almost seemed like LeBron isn't in the NBA. And what's funny is it seems like he is and he isn't. Like it seems like this incredible show, <laughs> this incredible like spectacle, but it quickly fades away when you lose. It's not even like, it's like, yeah, the like show, yeah. And then you lose and it's like, hmm. But everyone in LA just still seems so happy. Um, oh, and the announcer for the Lakers? Oh, my goodness. He is trash. Like, period. When you're introducing somebody as big as LeBron James to a city of L.A., I'm talking you better have the most excitement base. You better dig deep into your chest and pull out that LeBron. You better pull it out. Uh, LeBron James. Man, get somebody demote him. Um, appreciate everybody who rocks with us Appreciate everybody who likes Subscribes I appreciate everybody who DMs, comments, likes, shares um, I appreciate the community I appreciate the opportunity every week To voice our opinions And have discussions with you guys I appreciate you taking along Taking us along on your long drives Or your uh, long commutes to work or school. Sometimes it still feels weird knowing that somebody across the country is listening to you. Getting love from Dublin and Germany and things like that. Uh, someone hit me up from Egypt uh, saying they love the show. Um, asked if they could call in. I had to tell them no. It's in Egypt. Uh, shout out to you. Sorry. that I, I have no idea what time it is in Egypt. And yeah, that just ain't happening. But shout out to you. I appreciate you for listening. Uh, shout out to the homies. You know, obviously, I talk to you guys regularly. Shout out to Jay. Shout out to 
George should be back not next week because no episode no episode next week but uh, the following week uh, I guess Happy Cops um, I don't know what anybody looking for off the way. there's an Air Max Deluxe that the woman fire uh, obviously it's going to be hard to cop because men scoop up, scoop up all the 11s ASAP Rocky but that's one of them finds you can grab on StockX or GOAT uh, later on uh, shout out to everybody shout out to hopefully people involved in future endeavors uh, I want to make sure we keep this going I want to make sure that this show is important I want to make sure that it provides something. I want to make sure that people that come on the show enjoy themselves. I want to make sure that everyone's comfortable. I want to make sure that we maintain a high standard and quality. Um, no knock on any other shows, but our quality reigns supreme. Uh, I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, I am working on the merch, if you want to call it that. Um, some hoodies. I'm going to make 24, see what happens. Um, you're not going to have to wait two, three weeks to get them. Once you pay, they're going in the mail, two, three days shipping. Shout out to Hannah. And just to give you a heads up, our merch, God, I hate that word. Our sweatshirts, our merchandise that represents the podcast isn't going to be like your traditional stuff. It's not. It's going to be something completely different. You might hate it. You might like it. You might understand it. We're going to have to do a little explaining about it, but I love it. I love the concept. I showed a couple of people. There's like, that's dope. And I think it's different. It's not going to say sneak this on it. It's not going to have our faces on it. It's not going to say sneak this podcast. It's not going to say anything like that. It's going to be something completely different. And the first colorways will be forest green with infrared lettering. Um, so look out for that. I uh, appreciate everybody who listens. Happy cops this week. And that's the secret. Pow, 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 pow.